Hi. Um, so I'm just going to uh, go ahead and um, review this game. Um, so this is from, I don't know if you guys should check that out sometime. I, I actually don't review these videos, um, which you can probably tell because um, they're clearly not edited. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you guys can even see my little annotate bar here. Um, anyways, okay, so um, prep test uh, 92 plus um, section four, which is um, an extra um, logic games section in this test. Um, okay, so we've got uh, five hats and um, they're numbered one through five. Um, and uh, so something that's kind of interesting as well, yeah, they're numbered one through five, but they don't really like say it's like left to right or that it's like a sequence, right? It's more just like a matching exercise um, of like what type of hat uh, each of the numbers is. So we don't actually have any language about like first or second, right? It's just like hat number one, hat number two. Um, so this one could, it could kind of trick you a little bit into thinking that it's um, more of a sequencing game, but um, yeah, I mean, you can set it up like a sequencing game, right? One through five. Um, but in terms of like other sorts of sequencing rules, um, yeah, it actually doesn't really have typical sequencing rules, right? Like where a um, particular hat is earlier than another hat or something like that. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so I, I still will set it up so we have our um, five spots in a row. Um, that's fine. Um, and uh, there we go. Okay. And um, what do we have? We have three different kinds, F, P, and T. Um, we have a maximum of two uh, pill boxes. One thing with this um, right away is um, just kind of knowing that we have three different types, but we have five spots to fill. Um, so we don't have a one-to-one -one ratio of players to positions, and we are going to have to use some of the types, or at least one of the types more than once. Um, also, they say each hat is one of three kinds, but they don't say that each kind has to be displayed at least once. So, um, you know, it is also good to recognize that there might be an acceptable solution where one of the types isn't displayed. Um, I mean, going through the, the rules, we may discover that that's not gonna be the case, but at the outset, they don't say that we have to display at least one of each type. Okay, so um, moving on, um, we've got like a bit of a numbers rule here. So um, a maximum of two pill boxes are displayed. So we have a max 2P. So we're definitely gonna have at least two different kinds of, of hats, right? Um, oh, actually that's not necessarily true because we could still have zero P at this point. Um, so we could have five of one of the other ones. All right, anyways, um, three is not a pill box. So uh, for three, we can actually just um, say, okay, that's either a fedora or a tam. Another way that we could set this up is actually by doing it as a grid. So, so rather than having like a single line for what's actually there, we could um, have a line for each of the different types, right? So this could be the line for Fedora, this could be for Pillbox, and this could be for a TAM. Um, beside pillbox, we could say maximum two. Um, and then um, if three is not a pillbox, well, we can go ahead and um, cross that out. Um, so let's see how that works. Um, two is the same kind of hat as five. Okay, so that's not the most helpful 
right? This this grid isn't really going to give us much of an advantage there. Um, basically, just two and five are the same, right? Um, at this point, it could be any of them, any of the different types. Um, if one is a different kind of hat than three, so I would um, say like if one doesn't equal three, I will cross that out in a second, then two and four are both TAMs. So um, two is a TAM and four is a TAM. Okay, so if, oh, I don't, I can't move that if I, um, there we go. Okay, and so it's if one and three are not the same. So I have to draw a little line there to cross that out. Okay. Um, right. So um, if, either two is not a TAM, I'll have to draw a line to cross that out, or four is not a TAM, okay? Then one and three are the same. So that would be the contrapositive for this guy um, with, of course, these guys have to be crossed out. So um, that's how I would do rule four. So if one is a different kind than three, I'm representing that as one is, does not equal three, right? Um, then two equals T plus four equals T, right? They're both TAMs. So that's an and relationship between those two things. When we negate it, it becomes an or relationship between like the negations of those. So if either one of those guys isn't a TAM, then we know that one is not a different kind of hat than three. It is in fact the same kind of hat. Okay. Um, and then moving on to the last rule. Um, if three and four are both TAMs, so once again, I'm going to do three is a TAM and four is a TAM, then one is a pillbox. And if one is not a pillbox, and I'll um, add the slash through that equal sign afterwards, um, then um, three isn't a TAM or four isn't a TAM. And it could be the case that neither of them are TAMs, but we know at least one of them won't be. Okay, so just adding those slashes now. Right, so this is our flip and negate. The and became an or, just like when we negated here, and becomes or, or becomes and when we negate. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. Now let's go through here and, and make sure that we understand it by applying it in these questions. Um, okay, so I just go through the rules one by one and find the rule breakers and eliminate them. I find that to be like the fastest and like most um like consistent kind of for accuracy and efficiency for this so I, I actually go by the rules rather than looking at a and applying all the rules to a i just take a rule and then i find the rule breaker eliminate it move on to another rule and i do try to pick a rule like the easiest rules to apply first because then you don't have to worry about applying the difficult rules to those like the rule breakers for the easy ones, right? So for example, um, at most two pillboxes are displayed. That's a pretty easy one, right? I just look for the one where there's more than two, which is B and I eliminate that. Well, now when I'm applying a more challenging rule, I don't have five um, answer choices to apply it to. I only have four, right? And like three is not a pillbox. That's also a pretty easy one to apply, right? So I can eliminate A. Um, two and five are the same. Okay, so E is out. And now I only have two left over where I'm applying these more challenging, more like time consuming rules. So if one is a different kind from three, that condition isn't met for C or D. So rule four isn't going to be relevant 
for either of those, right? It's, it's not going to be triggered because the sufficient condition hasn't been met. Um, for both of these answer choices, one and three are different. Sorry, one and three are the same type of hat. So they're, they're not different. Um, so we don't need to worry about rule four here. Um, if three and four are both TAMs, which is the case for D, then one should be a pillbox and it's not there. So that does mean that C is the correct answer. And we actually see that um, pillbox isn't present, right? So um, that, um, that thing from, you know, the beginning where I said it's entirely possible that like we would have one of the kinds missing, that, that's the case. So um, bank of acceptable solutions here, right? I'm gonna keep track of that. So I just like write out the answer in a really simple format, big check mark next to it and move on, okay? Um, if exactly one TAM is displayed, then which one of the following must be true? So um, exactly one TAM, um, that's going to tell me um, like a, a couple things potentially, but um, the biggest thing that that's actually going to do um, is it's going to... Um, tell me that we can trigger the contrapositive of rule four. So it's really tempting for this one to think that it actually is going to trigger um, like rule five, right? But remember, if we negate this sufficient condition, that doesn't actually tell us anything. So if three and four are both TAMs, then we know one is a pillbox. But just because um, they, they aren't both TAMs doesn't tell me that one is not a pillbox. So I can't just negate the triggering condition and then negate the consequence. I have to negate and flip, right? Or negate and reverse to get the contrapositive. Um, so that's something um, just like in terms of conditional reasoning that it's really important to, um, to get clear. Okay. Um, but I do know that if exactly one TAM is displayed, that means that either two isn't a TAM or four isn't a TAM, or maybe neither of them are TAMs, but it does mean that one and three are going to be, um, the same. Right, so one and three are gonna be the same. Two and five are gonna be the same, right? If exactly one TAM is displayed, well, it can't be displayed in either two or five because that's gonna be doubled and it can't be displayed in either one or three because those are gonna be doubled. So the TAM must be um, the fourth, uh, the fourth one displayed. Okay. So I'll try to write that out a little bit here. So we're looking at the contrapositive for rule four. If two, um, I'm just gonna write that whole thing out like that, right? We have the space here. Or four is not, and then one and three are the same, okay? So we know two and five are the same. We know one and three are the same. So we know whatever's in two is gonna be doubled in five. There are gonna be at least two of it. Whatever's in one is gonna be doubled in three. So there are gonna be at least two of that type of hat. So the only hat where there's just like one of that type is four. So that one is gonna to have to be a TAM. All right. Um, Next one, 20, which one of the following must be true? All right, um, which one of the following must be true? Okay, so uh, no more than one pillbox is displayed. Um, I mean, two pillboxes doesn't really strike me as being um, a problem, 
really. Um, no more than three fedoras are displayed. Okay, so could we get four fedoras? Um, what would the consequences be of having um, fedoras, uh, four fedoras? Well, um, okay, so if we had four, what would we be looking at? We'd be looking at, um, okay, so one and three would both have to be fedoras to avoid adding the tans. Um, so, uh, so we could, we'd have one and three be fedoras, two and five be fedoras. Um, that doesn't strike me as problematic or causing issues um, in any way, right? Um, if three um, is a fedora, then it doesn't matter that four is a tam or um, a pillbox or whatever, that would be fine. So we can eliminate those. Um, no more than four tams are displayed. Okay, so why wouldn't we be able to have all five tams? Now we wouldn't be able to have all five tams displayed because if three and four are both tams, then one should be a pillbox. So four is the maximum number of tams. They can't all be tams. Oh, and I haven't been showing the answers for the other ones, but there we go. Oh, that's the answer. Um, which one of the following cannot be true? Um, five fedoras are displayed. Um, that's not going to trigger anything, so that's fine. Uh, four fedoras and one pillbox are displayed. Um, again, I don't see any issue with that. Three fedoras and two pillboxes are displayed. Um, yeah, not, not a problem. Um, so it's going to be these pillbox and tam ones. So two pillboxes and three tams. Um, okay, so pillbox can't be three. Um, two pillboxes. Okay, so the pillboxes would have to be one and four, I think, to make that work. Now, the reason I say that is because we can't have them two and five because then the rest would be tams. And if three and four are tams, then pillbox would have to be in one as well. So um, yeah, so that's kind of tricky, um, but could we have a pillbox in one? And then um, also in four, two and five are the same. They're both tams, three is a tam. Um, that's going to be a problem also because if one and three aren't the same, then two and four should both be TAMs and here they wouldn't be. Uh, so it looks like D, we're not going to be able to make that work. So let's um, try to make E work. So one pillbox and four TAMs. Um, so let's say pillbox there and then the rest are tams um, because then that way if three and four are tams one being a pillbox we've already uh, followed that rule so we don't have to worry about triggering it because it's it's a-okay um one and three are not the same um and that and that means that two and four should be tams which they are two and five are the same um, we haven't gone over the maximum of 2p and we haven't put a pillbox in three. So just kind of going through the rules to make sure that this is an acceptable solution. It is an acceptable solution. Go ahead and put it in the bank, um, even though we're nearly done the game. Um, and that means that we can eliminate it because we're looking for something that can't be true, which is D. No way to make D work. Okay. Um, 22, if four is a pillbox. All right, so four pillbox. All right, so what 
um, what is that going to trigger? Okay, so it's not third. Um, two and five have to be the same, um, which means that we can't have a pillbox in two and five, right? So if we wanted to, we could just go ahead and split this one um, and see, okay, what happens if we have Tams there? What happens if we have Fedoras there? Um, just because there are only two options. Sometimes rather than like spending a lot of time thinking about it, just going ahead and being like, okay, I have two options. Let's just write them out um, can be helpful. Um, okay, so, um, Okay, if two isn't a TAM or four isn't a TAM, all right, then we're definitely um, dealing with that, right? Because four is a pillbox. So we're dealing with the contrapositive of rule four. One and three have to be the same. Okay, so neither of them can be pillboxes either. So they also have to be uh, fedoras um, or TAMs. Um, one can't be a pillbox. So that means either three or four isn't a TAM, but four isn't a TAM anyways. So yeah, um, I mean, we could have lots of TAMs, lots of fedoras, or we could have um, two of each would be fine. So if four, oh, um, okay, interesting. Um, so if four is a pillbox, sorry, I just saw E. Um, if four is a pillbox, exactly five fedoras are displayed. Nope. <laughs> definitely not possible because four is a pillbox, not a fedora. Um, okay, so which one of the following could be true? Exactly one TAM is displayed. That can't be true because we're dealing with a scenario where two and five are going to be the same and one and three are going to be the same. So we either have zero TAMs, two TAMs, or four TAMs. We cannot have exactly one. Exactly two pillboxes are displayed. That cannot be true either. Um, we can't add a pillbox to one or three because then we'd have to add it to both and then we would go over our maximum of two P, exactly three fedoras. So once again, we're dealing with either zero fedoras, right? Just TAMs and a pillbox or two fedoras, right? Two fedoras, two TAMs, one pillbox or four fedoras. So D, D is possible. So yeah, um, hopefully that helps. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, these, these rules, I think in particular rule four is probably the most challenging and it was one where they relied on the contrapositive a fair bit. Um, so yeah, um, conditional reasoning, um, it's really valuable to get that um, cleared up. Um, definitely a way that um, a lot of people would be able to improve their score if they if they had a um, a deeper understanding of uh, that the conditional reasoning and and how to um, like interpret a conditional rule, change it into this little formula, and then um, take that formula, create the contrapositive, and then interpret the contrapositive. Right, understanding um, you know a sufficient condition being a trigger. Um, understanding necessary condition being like the consequence um, in these rules and that um, we don't care about a rule if it's not triggered. Um, and uh, yeah, just making sure that you're not making those errors in creating the contrapositive. So um, the two errors that you can make are to flip and not negate or to negate and not flip. So um, if you flip without negating, um, that would be like um, assuming that the presence of this consequence necessarily means um, that we can deduce that the trigger happened and we actually can't do that. There could have been, you know, this isn't, um, uh, there are other, other ways to get that result besides just um, going with that trigger. The trigger guarantees that that's going to be the result, right? Um, but uh, but it's not necessary. Um, and then um, the other one would be where if you just like negate the sufficient condition, right? So you say the trigger didn't happen and therefore the consequence didn't happen. Um, but um, again, like that consequence, it could happen um, without the trigger. Like there are other 
you got to think there are maybe like other ways that you could potentially get there. It's just that the trigger guarantees that you will get there. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, if, if you have follow up questions for this one, definitely let me know. Um, I, um, I hope that was a good explanation. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, just kind of rolling through doing my best, um, right now. Um, and uh, yeah, um, have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.